Today on Mr. Nashville Talks, Lucy Ewing from Dallas herself, Miss Charlene Tilton. Well, I have to tell you, I am so excited to be talking with you because I had the biggest crush on you. <gasps> oh, and, thank you. Uh, now, what do you mean hat? What do you mean hat? I still do. Still do. All right, then. Okay. Let's, so let's get that a, straight right here. <laughs> it's an honor to meet you. It's, it's great to see to you, my you. darling. Thank and you. Miss Charlene Tilton, yes. who we all know from Dallas, is Lu Lucy Ewing. Yes. And you've you. done so many other things also. But your first movie was with Jodie Foster. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Um, it was a Walt Disney movie called Freaky Friday. I was 15 years old. I was going to Hollywood High School, and um, an agent had seen me in a play at Hollywood High School and uh, came up afterwards and talked to our director and said, who is that little blonde girl who played all these different characters? I played like eight different characters. One was a mime. I didn't even have any lines. <laughs> and, and I said, that's me, that's me. And she said, well, do you like an agent? And I said, yes. So um, I did not have money for 8x10s. So I got my school picture blown up into 8x10s. And she started submitting me. And Freaky Friday was my second audition. Mm -hmm. And um, they asked me at the audition, can you water ski? <laughs> I didn't even know what water skiing was. I'd never seen a water ski. Didn't had no idea what it was. Well, I kind of vaguely knew. I mean, skiing on water, that's, you know. Mm -hmm. But I said, yes, I can water ski. I said, you know, I actually compete in water skiing. <laughs> wow, that's great. Well, for some reason back then, they didn't check. There was no internet, right. and uh, they couldn't Google me. So exactly. they took my word for it. So I get the part. Now I'm on the set with Jodie Foster. And we have to do the water skiing scene. And here we are. We're on our skis. She's here. I'm here. We both have lines. We're being pulled off the dock by the same boat. And I literally pray, dear Lord, please, if you, if you let me stand up on these skis and not fall, I'll do anything. I'm yours forever, dear God. <laughs> so action. The boat takes off. Jo and by the way, Jody had had lessons, of course, because she was a big star yeah. at that time. And so the boat takes off. We go skiing and we both kerplunk go in the water so it wasn't just me so she fell to him okay good <laughs> take two action the boat takes off we're on the skis and for some reason i'd never seen a water ski touched a water ski and for some reason that boat took off and i was skiing <laughs> and i have and i am really the most unathletic person on the planet oh, i, I can't run throw a ball catch a ball do anything at, for some reason, I was on water skiing. <laughs> and I was like, thank you, God. <laughs> but anyway, I had a great time doing that movie. Now, how was with she her. to work with? She was amazing. She was um, very smart. She yeah. was studying geometry. You know, you have to have school right, on the on set. set. So she was studying geometry in French. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, she was, you know, we, we all know that she's, you yeah. know, quite a genius. So, yeah. Well, and, and, and and, but she was so sweet. Really, yeah. Really. I've heard she, that about her. Lovely, an and her mom was great. We just had a good time. Now you had kind of a a, a rough time in your early years, and and acting was kind of an escape, wasn't it, for you? That like when yeah. I, I heard you talk about when you saw The Sound of Music, <laughs> something happened to you. Can you tell a little bit about that? The first movie I ever saw was Mary Poppins. The mm -hmm. second movie I ever saw was Sound of Music, and I was in a I was living in a foster home and my mom was in a mental institution. She got furloughed for a weekend and so I got to go and be with her for this one weekend. We stayed at a little ho dive hotel and she took me to see The Sound of Music and I thought that was just the most it was amazing. Here's this woman that makes clothes out of the draperies and everything is fine with music. And of course, Mary Poppins was the first movie I had seen. So I decided right then and there, I must have been switched at birth. There was obviously a problem. I was really meant to be Julie Andrews' daughter. So, well, here's Mary Poppins, practically perfect in every way. And here's yeah. Maria Von Trapp. And I went, okay. This is it. She's got to be my mom. So 
And my that that was my fan the beginning of my fantasy world as a kid. Yes. And so you decided then you wanted to get into acting. I did. I did. I wanted it's to. It's kind of an escape. Yeah, it was. All you were having to deal with. Yeah. And then at seventeen, you go in, and you read for a show called Dallas. Mm -hmm. This character Lucy Ewing. Yeah. And, and how did that go? I mean, how did that come about? And what did you think when you first read this character? Because she's a very, very fun, devious kind of character. Yeah, she was great. Um, well, there was a magazine called Drama Log. It's called Backstage West now. And they would put casting notices for uh, certain projects that were going on in there. and. They also, you know, give you the ins and outs, what's happening in the biz. So, um, and it's something the actors would always read. So, yeah. and I read that they were casting a miniseries, six part, a six episode miniseries called Dallas. Mm. And I read the list of characters, J.R. Ewing, Sue Ellen Ewing, and <laughs> Lucy Ewing. She was uh, born with a silver spoon, manipulative little sex pot, and, um, but left by her mother and father, raised by her grandparents. On, and I knew right away, I said, uh, uh, I said, I get this girl. She might have everything, but there's a vulnerability. There's, mm -hmm. um, there's a neediness. There's something in her that so, is more than just, there, there's something in her. And um, they would not see me for the part. My agent tried to get me an audition. And it was Barbara Miller who had cast me in a couple of things. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went to the studio and every day snuck onto Warner Brothers <laughs> every day for two weeks. Wow. Like if a car or a truck was driving, I'd run alongside. Now, <laughs> anybody watching this, do not try this. You will be arrested <laughs> and thrown in jail and whatever. This is, you can't do that now, but back then. So I would sneak in and beg her, please, can, come on, just let me come and read. Please let me read, let me read. So. After two weeks of doing this, they said, all right, come back tomorrow. And they wouldn't give me a script or anything to practice with sides, you know, mm -hmm. or anything. So the next day, my audition was at 5. I went to the studio at 1. <laughs> to st well, and I knew they were going to be at lunch. Yeah. And I went through the desks, and I oh. s found a script, and I stole it. Uh. <laughs> so I took the script, went to my acting coach, and worked with him, and went and auditioned, and... Uh, it, it, it was an auditioning process, like two or three callbacks, and and you got it. And, and we're so glad you did get yeah. it because Lucy was the one that young people tuned in to watch Dallas for, and especially guys. You know? Well, uh, Larry Hagman would beg to differ with you. He yeah, says yeah. it's Jr. Well, now I wanted to be Jr., but you <laughs> date, you know. Oh uh, yeah. Getting. Well, you know who was? It was to play Lucy. It was be, between myself. And Terry Nunn, the really? lead singer from Berlin. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. Wow. It was between her and myself. So you all were it, it, good competitors. We, yeah, we kind of, we did. We had this, and which is interesting because we're, you know, apples and oranges. Right, we're not right. really anything alike, but so. Well, you know, Dallas became such an overnight hit. You know, and, and it seems like it did, but it really wasn't. The, the, the six part miniseries mm -hmm. did very, fairly well and then they brought us back and we were doing okay mm -hmm. then the network said we're gonna move you to Friday night Friday night yeah. was the kiss of death for a yeah, television show right. back then and we all just went oh no <laughs> we're doing okay why are they doing this they're gonna kill us and we're done and everyone felt like it was probably gonna be the end of mm -hmm. our show but Jim Davis who played um, Jock Ewing, my granddaddy, he said, well, Goomba. I don't know. He always said Goomba. He's Goomba. <laughs> he goes, I don't think so. He goes, I think this just might work out. Goomba. <laughs> and Lord knows it did. He was yeah. the only one and it did. It worked out and all of a sudden, man, did it take off. Well, you know, because then most people it changed, didn't have cable, you know. Right. You had three stations. You had three networks on. and um, it changed television viewing habits. Then people stayed in to watch Dallas. Yeah. And it was the number one show in the world. Oh, right. In yeah. the world. And, and in I mean, over 190 something countries. It was. How did you deal with that, though? I mean, because you go from, you know, a little bit of success, but I'm sure not 
totally recognizable everywhere no, not you at went. All. Mm -mm. And now there's no way you couldn't be recognized. Because aside from Dallas, you're in all these magazines and, you know, you're every guy's got a crush on you and you know, it you're, was, you're it was you know, it was a very busy time because when you know, you were filming, the days you weren't filming, you were doing publicity or you know, it was it was working. It was twenty four seven. It was a lot of work. Um and but I loved every minute of it and it gave me the opportunity to travel and yeah. meet people and do things and um I loved it. So Well, you know, being the, the sexy young girl on the show, I'm, you know, like I said, you had a lot of guy fans, and I, I'm sure you ran into some crazy <laughs> fans along the way. What, have you had a difficult experience or a fun experience that you might? Um, pretty much everybody was, you know, it, it was nothing really bad. Had, oh, that's great. That's yeah, good. it was pretty good. you always hear, you know, especially with with, you know, the pretty yeah. ladies, you always hear that there's some stalker or somebody that's a little overzealous. We had, and, we had our certain moments, but mm -hmm. pretty nothing much. Nothing too bad. Nothing too bad, no. Do you have a favorite episode? I love the storyline where Lucy was engaged to marry a young man named Kit Mainwaring. Mm -hmm. He was the youngest of the Mainwaring oil family. So it was like the Ewing family and the Mainwaring. They were, you know, they were the big Texas oil family. And Kit Mainwaring was the son who was my age. And um, JR thought it would be great to get us together to combine the fortunes. And mm -hmm. I felt, you know, Lucy fell in love with Kit Mainwaring. Everything was great. He was adorable until he confessed he was a homosexual. Yeah, and he that. couldn't marry me. And we couldn't even use the word gay. We had, right. to, he had, we had to use the word homosexual. Remember when we met Sam the other night when we were dancing? Yeah. He wasn't just my roommate. We were lovers. What? I'm a homosexual. You can't be. I don't believe it. Well... Mark Wheeler, the young actor who they cast, was absolutely phenomenal. It was only a three-episode three arc, mm -hmm. but you saw Lucy just meet this young man, fall in love, engaged to be married, and all these things, and then they handled it. Nothing like that had really been talked about on right. television, oh, yeah, and, he, and he came out and confessed to me. And I and he said, you know, Jr. is going to make a big deal of this. It's going to take my family down, and you know, he's going to cause a big scandal. And I said, uh, uh. I said, I'll handle Jr. And Lucy went and said, Jr. I decided I'm not, I, you know, I just can't m marry him. He's, you know, too controlling, whatever. And um, I just loved that. Uh, those three episodes were my favorite. Yeah. Was there a particular cast member that you were closer to, or um, it seems like you 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 know it was it seemed on television. Of course, you're playing this big family, but you know, I, I was the set close. Where, where we were all, person? and we still keep it. We That's all great. still keep in touch. Um, I, I guess I would say Larry. Honestly, um, yeah, yeah, he was kind of the 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 ship. You know, the leader of the ship. He was, yeah, yeah he was for sure. And yeah. um, you know, when you go into uh, his his who shot Jr. arc, and you know that whole thing. How did that? How did you handle that? I mean, was that was when the show was the biggest show yeah. ever? I mean, you had to be stopped everywhere. Yeah, and probably said who you know asking you who shot Jr. and and all of that. Yeah. Uh, how how did you handle that at that point? So I mean, it was like eighty something million people. I think they viewed it. Right, uh, more than that, but yeah. it was yeah, it was, uh, and um, well. And then, they, of course, they had the Who Shot JR parties, too. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, everyone had a big party. Um, well, I told them the truth. I didn't know because yeah. I didn't. We kind <laughs> of had a feeling, but, you know, they did shoot some endings with mm -hmm. different cast members. Uh, it's like gave options. Yeah, and I didn't even know what they were doing. They, the director said, Charlene, come here. Hold this gun for a minute. And I went, <laughs> okay. And they went, come over here and just say, 
look in, in the camera and say, take that, take that, and that, you schmuck. And I went, oh, okay. I guess Lucy is not the one who shot JR because she would <laughs> never use the word schmuck. Right. Take that and that and that, you schmuck. <laughs> it doesn't work. So I kind of knew it wasn't me. Um, but you did give JR a run for the Oh, movie yeah. And I, those were my favorite scenes. Yeah. I loved when Lucy went toe to toe with yeah. JR. Because he's so powerful on the screen, yeah. Larry Hagman. Yeah. And here's this little lady, you know, she just tears into him. Yeah. And I loved it. You really probably, uh, the, the, uh, one who gave him the best yeah. run, I think. I think so, too. Yeah. I think so, too. And, uh, you know, Donna uh, Reed was on the show for a little bit. Were yes. you on when, when Donna yes. was on? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Now, what was that like? What was the real deal on that? Do you have a sc the scoop of what really happened? Because, you know, there was all kinds of rumors. Right. And, or, you know, about... Well, she came on to, re to play Miss Ellie. Yeah. And the same character, and she actually replaced Barbara Bel Geddes. Mm -hmm. Two completely mm -hmm. different people. Right. I think Donna Reed was put in a situation that nobody could have handled. I became very close with Donna Reed, probably more than anybody else on the show, um, and spent quite a bit of time with her and her husband at the time, Grover. Um, and I remember the first time I went to her house for dinner, she invited me over and to have dinner and um, so I walk in and I'm trying to be all cool and I'm <laughs> and I'm like and I'm like this and, <laughs> and, and she goes Charlene what are you doing and I'm like looking around and I go I just gotta ask where is it she goes where is what I go the Oscar where's your Oscar <laughs> she goes oh it's it's there on the bookshelf it was behind books there were books oh, and, there were, yeah. and I said what's it doing back here she goes well you know it's it's it just would be you know whatever she said grander it would be would it presumptuous to put yeah. it I said honey no 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 you take <laughs> it you get a chain you wear it around your neck and put it on <laughs> Mounted as a hat, you wear. I said, okay, take that thing, dusted it off, polished it, put it right in her, and it and it sat right in, in the center of her coffee table until she passed away. Oh, but I made her. I said, nah, -uh, uh, you take that awesome. and you put that right here. And that's of course, nice. I got to hold it the whole night. We're like eating dinner, and here's the Oscar. <laughs> so I'm like eating. Yes. So tell me more. And I like holding the Oscar like this as I'm eating dinner. <laughs> Well, and the show got so popular, you got so popular. She was she was lovely, by the way. Yeah. I mean, she was Very she was amazing. Lady. And then and then what happened was. Barbara Bel uh said, I'm better. She had gone through some health things, and she said, I'm better, and I want to come back. And um, they brought her back. So and that was that. That was that. <laughs> well, you know, like I was saying, the show was so popular. You got so popular that you end up hosting Saturday Night Live. Yeah. With Prince yes. as your music guest. Mm -hmm. I mean, what was, I mean, did you think that he was going to be as big as he I guess he was kind of big then, really. No, he was no? the unbilled musical guest. Really? Todd okay. Rundgren was the musical guest. Right, right. Prince was the unbilled because he wasn't really known yet. Well known, he was known but not really well known. And um, I had no idea who he was. Yeah. And um, they had put us up at the Plaza Hotel in New York, mm -hmm. coming down the elevator, and they had you know sent a car. So there's this man in the elevator with somebody else and I'm there and I and he's got these shoes these platform shoes <laughs> like this yeah and I'm like and he's tiny but he's wearing these and I'm like oh my god where did you get those shoes I have to <laughs> tell me you got them in New York where I gotta get these shoes I got anyway so we talked about his shoes that's great, that's great. and he said oh, hi I know who you are blah 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 and I said hi and I, he said well I'm gonna be doing Saturday Night Live with you. I said, oh my gosh, great. So I go out to get a car, my car, into my car, and they have a car for him. For some reason, I don't remember why if one car was late or whatever, I said, ah, but we were talking. Mm. So we took the car together to the studio. Oh, and he was very sweet. I kept telling him I was so nervous to host that week. He says, you're gonna be great, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and anyway, so here I am, and he comes out and plays, and I'm like, whoa. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of knew. And he he it changed everything when he did that show. Yeah. And then Eddie Murphy was part of the cast. Joe Piscopo. Yeah. And you do Eddie Murphy was so 
nice really? and so um, generous. When I did it, I, I said, you know, I've got this idea for a sketch. Back then, this commer you couldn't watch television without getting uh, away from the commercial, what's the best tuna, chicken of the sea, okay? So there's this, you, you got the chicken of the sea, ask any mermaid you happen to see, what? <laughs> okay, so I said, what if I'm the, the chicken of the sea mermaid and it's a la Sunset Boulevard? So now, she's got a martini in her hand, she's got a cigarette, she can't get work anyway. She's this washed up mermaid just sitting there like this with a drink in it. And Ed, and Eddie's like, I like that, that's pretty, it's really funny. Oh yeah, so she's kind of like this, she can't get any jobs anymore. There's a younger mermaid taking her place and she can't, and he says, all right, well, so what we did is, we, they kind of tried to come up with a sketch for the chicken of the sea mermaid Mm -hmm. a la Sunset Boulevard, but it became Underwater Cop. <laughs> so it was Eddie and I, he was the detect. he was the sergeant or whatever, I was the detective. It opens, I'm behind this desk, I'm wearing this suit. Yeah, so tell, all right, so we're gonna have to go. I'm gonna send you out and, you know, whatever. You're gonna get in your car and go and stake them out, whatever. All right, come on. And then all of a sudden I slither out and I'm in a mermaid thing, so I'm, un there she's bold, she's bad, she's beautiful, she's underwater <laughs> cop. Coming to NBC this fall. That's great. <laughs> well, a lot of people may not know that you're also a singer. And mm. yeah, you're a, good, you're a really good singer. Mm. And you had a hit in Not Europe. real good, huh? You had a hit in Europe. Yes. And uh, you also, you married country singer Johnny Lee. Yes. Had a beautiful daughter named Cherish yes. Lee. She's a really good singer. Now, what about a mother-daughter duet? Oh, heavens no. No? Never. No, 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 no. I'm really not. I did, um, I did uh, Snow White a couple of years ago at the Pasadena Playhouse in Los Angeles. Ariana Grande was Snow White. I was oh, the Wicked wow. Queen. Neil Patrick Harris was the Mirror, and I got to sing in that. But oh, yeah, I heard it, about that. Actually. Yeah, but I, but I can't sing like you know. I mean, Ariana Grande or any of those people. So I was, I could like laugh, ha 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 ha, get my <laughs> evil laugh through it. So no, I'm not a, I'm not a singer. No, yeah. per se. Well, now, uh, we have a, a mutual friend. Who? Tammy Faye Baker. Yes. Mesner, Baker Mesner, who I love dearly. Yes. And you were you, you were doing a one-woman show of her and, and a movie, correct? Or yes. working on a movie. There is nobody more perfect to play Tammy than you because you're about the same height, mm -hmm. same build, mm -hmm. so bubbly, so sweet. Did you know Tammy really well? I did. I, I, I knew her uh, more towards the end, and she did yeah. give me the rights to her, Story. she wrote it down. I got the letter That's in her amazing. handwriting. Yeah, <laughs> whatever you can, you have the rights to do whatever story you want. Blah blah blah. That's so, amazing. Yeah, yeah. You think it? You, you think a movie will come about? Uh, it could. Uh, who knows? It could. It, it, it could. For lifetime. Would it, be was, great. it was originally we had. I had a film script with it, and then um, someone, a, a Broadway producer, had said, "Do you ever think of doing this as a one-woman show?" I said, "Well, as a matter of fact, yes, I have." So. Um, I did that in Los Angeles, and we're kind of in the process of working on that. I think that'll be great. I think it'll be. People don't know her real story. It's called Tammy Faye tweets. Oh. So Tammy Faye comes back. Oh, okay. She gets so one night pass from heaven. She comes back, and she's now dealing with social media, <laughs> and she's answering questions and talking and tweeting, and so. Yeah. That'd be great. I, yeah, I, I'd love to see that. Yeah, it's it was act, it's really good. I got to say, yeah. I'm really proud of it. Now, is is it uh, going to tell the good, the bad? Yeah, the, uh, and I told her that. I told yeah. her when I was at dinner. I said to her, I said, look, you know, I'm going to tell you your story, nice. good, bad, ugly, and different. She goes, oh, my life's an open book. Well, you know, she really was. A lot of people don't know that about her. They have these misconceptions because of, you know, everything that happened on in the tabloids and all that stuff. But she was really a lovely, sweet honest uh, lady, you know, she really was. Yeah. And cared she about was. people. Oh, she really loved people. Yeah. She did. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, you also have another love and we share something in common with, uh, you work with autistic children. Yes. And I, I did that years ago as you well. You did? Where? Uh, well, uh, in Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. Yeah, I would, I would work with the children and the mothers and fathers would go and learn how to uh, 
cope and things they could do, activities and, you know, just get kind of uh, encouragement from other mothers. Yeah. And they had like a group there that did That's that. That's great. And so I worked with the kids while uh, the mothers and fathers were getting their training, you know. But they're they're so loving. Yeah. And tell us what you're what you're doing with with the autistic. Um, I was president of Actors for Autism. Mm -hmm. It's an organization that was started by a woman named Elisa Wolf. Um, a friend of mine had told me about this organization. I didn't. I knew nothing mm -hmm. about autism. I'd never, to my knowledge, met anybody right. with autism. I never spent any time with anybody with autism or family member. Um, I went there and I guess because I didn't know anything. The reason I went there is my fiance had passed away unexpectedly uh, the day before Christmas. This was like seven years ago. And I was a mess and after about four months of laying on my couch, smoking cigarettes and drinking, I said, all right, enough of this. I had one of those aha moments where I s God said, are you going to just lay down and join them or are you going to get up and yeah. live the life I have? I've got plans for you. I go, all right. So, you know, psychology 101, to get out of your own pity party, go help somebody else. Right. Everyone knows that, right? Exactly. If you're having a down day, go help somebody else. Go make somebody else smile and whatever. Exactly. So I said, I called my friend. I said, what is that thing that you were telling me about that you do that actors for autism? So I came down, I went down there, didn't know anything. But I see these kids, mm. and I'm supposed to teach them acting. Well, I just saw their talent. So, mm -hmm. like this one kid, Dominic, he kept telling me what to do. I said, Dominic, come here. I can tell you're a director. Come and help me. Be my co-director here. So, and Oksa, you you got a you you'd be great at voiceovers. So why don't you why don't we write a character? You're gonna be the voiceover here and do this. And I just saw their talents and their gifts, and I just fell in love with them. Mm -hmm. They're so lovely. And I, and I ended up working there for seven years until I moved to Nashville. Yeah. And some of them were nonverbal, yeah. couldn't yeah. communicate. Well, now they're making their own movies through the program at Actors for That's Autism. Awesome. Uh, we have, t two years ago, we started the film festival that they hold at a big theater in Los Angeles. They're on stage accepting their awards. You can't oh. get them to be quiet. They're up there making their speeches. That's great. They are writing their own scripts, they're filming, they're doing, I mean, to watch what they have done in seven years that I was working with them is amazing. Um, it's just phenomenal. And um, I was really, I'm, I'm blessed to know them. It's real fulfilling. Yeah. It, well, I can tell them, I have a couple movies coming out, one oh, with great. Nicolas Cage that I co-starred in called Vengeance, A Love Story. Awesome. And um, so be on the lookout for that with Nicolas Cage. And, two um, Hallmark movies, a Christmas one called Old Acquaintance Be Forgot, and another one um, called Road Less Traveled with Lauren Alenia, oh. who, uh, who, it's based on her song, yeah. Road Less Traveled, that she wrote with Megan Trainer. So That's awesome. Yeah. Well, we'll be looking out for those. Thank you. And we're just so glad to have you, an honorary Nashvilleian. Thank and you. And thank you for being with me today. Well, thank you for having me. Hey, having me. Woo! <laughs> Subscribe to our mailing list and you could win a CD or DVD project by today's featured artist. To enter, please go to www.mrnashvilletalks.com and enter your email address. While there, take a look around, browse through our music store, or order one of our Mr. Nashville Talks t-shirts for $20. Our show is totally funded by viewer support. I want to hear from you, so follow our social media via Twitter, Instagram, or like us on our Facebook page.